this podcast came to look at liver function tests. The liver has lots of functions, producing things like albumin and clotting factor. However, these tests that we use in hospital don't actually measure the synthetic function of the liver. They more measure its structural integrity. I'll come on to a bit more in a minute. So first of all, just to review the anatomy of the liver. The liver um, has blood supply going into it from the uh, portal system, from the intestines. And that travels through the liver, coming out on the other side after having cleaned the blood and put some substances into the blood, comes out the other side into the hepatic vein, which then travels up to the heart to be pumped around the rest of the body. In addition, there is bile flowing in the opposite direction into the gallbladder, where it's stored the secretion into the gut. Liver function tests are taken from a blood sample which comes from the systemic circulation. So they measure anything which gets secreted into the hepatic vein. So just taking a closer look, the blood flows in through the portal vein and along sinusoids which are lined by hepatocytes and coming out the other end into the hepatic vein. Sitting on the other side of the hepatocytes is the bile or the bile cannulicity. These are lined by their own special epithelial cells and bile is produced into these cannulicity which then flows in the opposite direction to blood. So now let's zoom in a little bit closer, have a look at the hepatocytes lining the sinusoid. Inside the hepatocytes there are lots of enzymes involved in liver function and these include ALT, or alanine aminotransferase, and AST, or aspartic aminotransferase. Any number of stimuli can damage these hepatocytes. When this damage occurs, cause death of the hepatocytes and release of the enzymes inside the hepatocytes into the hepatic circulation. This then reaches the systemic circulation to be measured in our blood test, giving an LFT result of a raised ALT and a raised AST due to damage to the hepatocytes. As we showed before, on the other side of the hepatocytes sit the bile cannulicule, which are lined by their own special membrane. Into the bile cannulicule, these same hepatocytes secrete conjugated bilirubin, which goes in to form the main component of bile. Any block to this flow of bile, um, such as by a tumour, either inside or outside the liver in the bile duct, causes the bile, the bilirubin that's being produced into the bile duct, to begin to back up. Um, and where it's got nowhere to go, it seeps through and into the hepatic vein and that circulation, so that when you then sample the blood in the systemic circulation, we pick up uh, raised levels of conjugated bilirubin. So that's suggesting blockage downstream of the hepatocytes within the bile ducts or outside the liver itself. As well as causing a raised conjugated bilirubin level, damage within the bile cannulicule themselves can lead to release of other factors. This is by damaging the cells which line the cannulicule, the green um, cells here. These cells contain a range of other enzymes not found in the hepatocytes. Um, these enzymes include gamma GT and alkaline phosphatase. This can be released when the cells lying in the bile ducts are damaged. When they were released, again, we can see them into the systemic circulation and be measured when we do our LFP's blood test. So just to summarise that, within the liver there's the hepatocytes and there's also the bile system. Damage only to the hepatocytes is to release of ALT and AST into the systemic circulation which we can see on our liver function test. Blockage or damage only to the biliary part of the liver leads to a raising conjugated bilirubin 
and in alkaline phosphatase and gamma GT. However, these systems don't work completely in isolation, and any massive acute trauma to the liver will affect both the hepatocytes and the bile panoptomy, as well as chronic liver failure, where uh, fibrosis um, and continued damage within the liver is not limited only to the hepatocytes or the bile panoptomy. Both will be affected, producing a picture of raised ALT, raised AST, raised ALKFOS, raised gamma GT, and also a con high conjugated BDD. So to summarise that, the liver function tests comprise the amino transferases AST and ALT, which sit in the hepatocytes, and if they're raised, they indicate hepatocellular damage. They contain the bile canalicular enzymes, gamma GT and alkaline phosphatase, um, where if those are drip, that raised, it suggests blockage in the biliary system or damage, toxic damage perhaps, particularly to those cells. And then a high conjugated bilirubin in the um, systemic circulation suggests that the conjugated bilirubin being secreted into the bile ducts is backing up due to a blockage. So I'll now just leave you with two key points about liver function tests that can be confusing and common questions. Alkaline phosphatase is also produced by osteoblasts in the bone and is used as an indication of um, high bone turnover. And so you need to look at the gamma GT level to tell you if the ALP is coming from the bone or coming from the liver. If ALP is raised on its own, that suggests it's coming from the bone, whereas if both ALP and gamma GT are raised, that suggests it's coming from the biocanalicity in the liver. The second point is that in this podcast we've only talked about conjugated bilirubin. You can get a raised level of unconjugated bilirubin um, in two situations. Firstly, if the synthesis of bilirubin the conjugation of it within the liver isn't working correctly, so that can happen with things like hepatitis um, or enzyme defect. Or you can get a high unconjugated bilirubin if there's too much of the precursor um, to bilirubin hanging around. Bilirubin's made from hemoglobin breakdown, um, and so if there's too much hemoglobin, for example, in hemolytic anemia, you can get a raised unconjugated bilirubin level. So thank you for listening to this uh, podcast about liver function tests and I hope it's been useful.